My name's Jade Ung Jackman and I'm a filmmaker and a writer. I'm super interested in stories to do with um, women's lives or um, their narratives that haven't really been told before. I find that super exciting. And um, I also am very interested in ideas to do with like obsession or like sport um, and the action genre. And recently I've really got into the use of color in my films. So you can see that I is actually quite a big part of how um how my films come across is sort of color blocking which has been enjoyable and um i make documentaries music videos um content and i used to work as a journalist having worked at places like vice and the guardian and now i'm represented by black dog films and ridley scott creative group i I think at the core of it all is the idea of storytelling. Um, obviously, if you decide that you're more interested in the technical um, camera side, you might be well suited to being a cinematographer, but today I'm just going to focus on what I see as the core of filmmaking, which is really storytelling. Um, thinking why you are using certain visuals to tell a story what effect is that going to have? So take, for example, if you want to tell a story about, you know, the impact of like Pret coming into your local area. So if that is the film that you want to make, you maybe you need to go and find a character first. I'll think about like, why am I wanting to make a film about this person? Do they have something compelling that I can, um, film and their appearance do they have something they can show me or we can journey with the place then what is the visual if you test yourself by going to practice those things you will start like learning the elements that make um a film and you'll get the same like the skills on the way so i would definitely start by like filming something close to you i think one of the first things that I ever I made a film about was my grandma. My grandma is someone who is like pretty interesting, I think as well, but I think most people's grandparents have some like pretty interesting stories that are really um, important to document. And then you can start thinking about like the B-roll, are you gonna use archive footage, like other things that you might cut into it to make the piece more compelling. And by through doing a story like that, you will um, easily learn like how important it is to record sound clearly, um, using a microphone, um, what, you know, better times of day to shoot. And then by practice, you'll start getting a better idea of how to put those elements together, which can be like applied to, to lots of different visual projects. Essentially, when you're a director, like you're leading a little team of people into creating something. And I think by doing those personal projects and understanding how lots of different elements work together, when you start scaling up and you're working with a team of like 40 people and um, you're collaborating with them, having the confidence from DIY filmmaking really helps you stand your ground, understand the language. Once you've got made a couple of videos, you might get represented by a production house and you're gonna start having commissions from uh, brands, musicians, um, other people who've got money and wanna make videos. They'll come to you and they'll ask you for a treatment. And a treatment is um, basically a visual mood board um, showing your concept visually to other people it's sort of leading the way I like to think of it is leading um the musician the brand the creative director on a journey with you like through your mind and saying this is how I'm going to tell story, what it's going to look like um I think also especially when you're starting out like you might not know where to get those references from I would recommend like keeping a folder on your computer with anything that you see when you watch films, like screenshot it, just keep notes, keep a visual scrapbook so that um, you've constantly got lots of ideas bubbling around that when you get to the stage where you're pitching an idea to people, you can really explain visually what you might want that to look like. But when you're doing documentaries, they can all be quite different. They won't necessarily be um, 
they might not be as visual you might just have like a one page synopsis um a creative statement and log line so for different uh, brands or pitches or funds there'll be a slightly different way of working and that often will be up to the team um who you're pitching to to decide what that might be like my biggest bit of advice is if you're just fresh out of university or you are embarking on your first film it's a small project that you can write about that you can take photos of something that you can show people your storytelling abilities because that will help you get your first bit of funding whether it's 500 pounds whether it's 5000 pounds whether it's 10000 pounds just making sure that you are showing the funders or whoever you're pitching to that you've thought about it that you've thought about who you're going to speak to that you've thought about your audience and you've also thought about like you being the right person to make this film. I think that's really important as well. And just making sure that you've got some of that consideration um, in place. So say you've done that and you are thinking about getting your film project off the ground, like how do you go about it? Um, and for, you know, the, the ease of you guys to keep up with what I'm saying, I'm gonna use the antidote of, um, of a project that I'm working on at the moment. Before lockdown began, I got really interested in um, action films. When lockdown started, it gave me lots of excuse to start watching all those kind of films again. So while I was doing my research, thinking about my idea, I stumbled upon um, a sort of hashtag movement that has started online called diversity and stunts and this was because even in 2018 2019 big productions were still using like blackface browning people up um rather than hiring stunt performers of the same ethnicity as the actors they were casting and i like everyone else in the industry you know who is aware of what's going on. We know that it's not for like the lack of talent. So then I started researching um, women in the UK who wanted to get into the stunt industry. And I stumbled upon this amazing woman called Aisha Hussein. And um, just before lockdown really started, we'd met up and we decided we were gonna make a film together. So um, obviously lockdown happened and like we can I can shoot a teaser with her in in normal way and that is one thing especially if you're applying for documentary funding um, but even if you're not applying to documentary funding number one do your research think about what has been made about there before and um about the subject that you want to make a film about before and then think about like who is this film about like who are my search characters that can be fic in fiction or in documentary um, but just really understand who is going to be in your film and who's going to be interested in watching it and why are you wanting to it. So after you've thought about all of that um, and you found your person, then how do you start approaching people? And I would say, so find images or shoot a teaser. So again, you want to spend loads of money before you've got funding on the teaser because that's kind of a bit, you know, What's the point in doing that? So actually in lockdown, I did a Zoom call um, with Aisha and I recorded it. And I got her to show me how hard it must be training to be a stunt woman in your tiny bedroom in South London. Like how mad is that? Like she is a knife thrower, she uses weapons she does splits, she needs to go to a dojo, like all the stuff she's doing in her tiny room. So rather, well, it's not that tiny, but her small room, she's had to trade it into a gym and she's really brought all the equipment in so that she, her training schedule won't get behind um, because of lockdown. So then I was like, okay, how can I change? How can I make this part of the story? So I was like, rather than try and film her out her window or something, I'm gonna shoot this Zoom call. I'm gonna get her to show me how difficult it is on screen like how to do the sword movements you need much more room you need to be outside you need to be in a gym but she can't she's in her bedroom so making those negatives into a positive 
So that's what we did. Um, also using like phone cameras, in interesting ways, like thinking about how you can maybe edit the phone footage to be more dynamic. Like, can you layer it up onto a screen? So say you've done all of that and then you've, you've got the footage. So I've got all the footage of Aisha. Um, and then I think, okay, now I want to get this funded by some platforms. Then do some, a little bit more research and think what platforms are there? Like, do I want this to live online digitally? Do I want this to go to a film festival? Um, so I would say that if you're looking for short film funding, good places to reach out to. Um, Nowness, you know, The Guardian, um, Vice ID, these are all places that take short films from filmmakers. They're the kind of people who will fund innovative film projects, The Face. But yeah, do the research, find something visual or audio led if you want to make a radio documentary that also shows how other people are going to want to be engaged with your, you know, your fabulous collaborators that you found. That's also something that you should have fun with in a way. It should be like the exciting part, finding the collaborators and finding people who are going to be like your people and, and your team. And I think we're really lucky at the moment to have social media. Sometimes it doesn't feel like that. Sometimes I'm like, I really don't want to see any more content get away from me. But um, the, the way that I've met lots of people, especially coming up, is just by reaching out to them online. Send them an email if you like their work. Um, people send me emails the whole time. I email other people, um, DM someone on Instagram. You can, it's a really amazing way to keep up with contemporary creatives, um, people who are in your circle. But I think that's one of the amazing things is that reaching, reaching out to that actor that you like the look of, reaching out to um, someone who you think has got an interesting story and pitching to them like I would really like to work with you because I think this um, film that you've done or this photo that you've taken is a very similar aesthetic to what I'm trying to achieve with X project and I think that's really important as well is that when you are reaching out to your potential crew or someone that you want to work with be you know be specific I think if you come to someone telling you like this is the idea that I've got this is what I want to do or I really like this bit of yours and I think it will fit with what I'm planning on doing in the next few months that's much more likely to get a response it's much more considered um and you know we everyone's so busy we've got a million things going on I think it's better to do that than than to um send like a vague dm or um yeah, like set, sending a really generalized email to people. With short films, you can almost see them as, um, you know, a calling card. I think you can have it private on Vimeo for a bit or on YouTube and send it out to people um, before you, um, you know, put it online because some film festivals want to have exclusivity some platforms want to have exclusivity as well but if you're using it as like it's something that's a trailer you know it's just it's a sort of little interview that you're using to actually get funding in the first place then you know that can that can be put on your instagram or your social media for my film with Aisha we um we put it on you know we put it online um on my instagram um you know, it's only like a minute and a half long just because I thought people would find it interesting. Um, but I think if you've got some funding and you are super proud of the film, you might want it to have a festival life. So most, quite a few festivals do want people to pay, which, you know, it's not, um, if you've, you've managed to get budget from someone, it's quite maybe quite a good idea to save, um save some of that budget for festival entry, but then there's also like a lot of good ones that don't have any submission fees. Um, and then there's other platforms that stream short films as well, like um, 4.3 Boiler Room and like now there's, they also do submissions to premiere short films as well. Um, but yeah, I think once you've shot your film, um, it can be good to have a think about like, what do I wanna, what am I, what do I wanna do with this? Like how, do I see this 
going out like going out there am I going to do like maybe a zoom a zoom viewing party really getting into like the COVID way of thinking now again like you can chat to your local councils you can chat to town halls like different spaces about that might give you a discount especially if um young people in the community might be interested in it as well I would definitely say if you've made a short and you think it's got some impact to it like think creatively about how you can get other ways um, of people to see it because all the platforms that I've mentioned like they might reach a certain group of people but not everyone so just think about how you can how you can connect with your audience when you're thinking about getting the film out there so yeah my film with Aisha like we are applying to a couple of film funds at the moment um from which I have you know I've made a treatment for that and um, we are using the sort of teaser that I shot over Zoom as a, as a way to show more of her personality, to show her humour and her wittiness and her zeal and her amazing sword and knife skills. And then we're also going to be launching Kickstarter, which um, is, you know, crowdfunding is another way to get projects off the ground, especially if you're not having any luck, maybe with conventional funding sources. So we are going to be launching a Kickstarter at the end of February. And um, I think that can be a really great way to like raise, you know, under £10,000 um, to launch like a short film project. Doing a Kickstarter or a crowdfunder does take quite a lot of work as well. You have to quite a lot of planning and thinking about how you're going to get it to reach more people and widen the, um, the audience for your project. But um, it is... It's, I think it will be quite a rewarding process because especially with our film, we want to um, amplify Aisha's voice and her story. So I think crowdfunding and, and connecting with more people through the crowdfunding process will probably be quite helpful for our film's audience overall. I think some of the most important um, qualities to to have as a person and as a filmmaker um especially you know in our professions because essentially you are working with a lot of people you're interacting with a lot of people is um integrity uh being honest and authentic about why you are wanting to tell um tell a certain story what is it that is drawing you to it um and you know, being really real with those collaborators that you have, being you know, being really genuine with them. I definitely think resilience um, is important, especially for people who don't come from super privileged backgrounds. Like there is absolutely like no shame when you're starting out working in um, a pub. It doesn't mean that you're any less talented. Um, that your ideas are not as good as anyone else's um, you know we all know that like access to opportunities are like not the same for everybody so don't be harsh on yourself if you're like having to do lots of other things at the same time to hustle to, to you know to get your to get your foot in the door I say like try and be smart like with um, what you're doing like reach out to like other emerging talents whether that's music actors whoever like just think about all the different people you can kind of reach out to and you can improve your um creative vision and your creative voice like one thing that I still do now is um reach out to different actors or friends who I know act who might need like a show reel or they might need someone to practice doing their lines with because I started out in documentary and I want to get better with working with actors and obviously they want to do that as well so that's a nice um creative exchange that doesn't necessarily cost any money but you can practice your skills about thinking how would i um understand the subtext of this um article that they're performing as a monologue or this um piece of text what is going on here like how should their expression be it's like how am i gonna how am i gonna speak to this person to um, direct them in a way that they understand to get the subtext of um, the film out. Where should they sit in their room? Like all these little things help you build an understanding of what it means to like be a filmmaker in your way of, of making a film and, and talking to people.
in documentaries you always kind of create a consent film which says that people are happy to participate in um your project and that they know what it is about and I worked in I like to work in a really collaborative way anyway um I think a lot of platforms will require you to have those consent forms depending what your project is about or what your film is about um you know really thinking can can this could this footage harm anyone could it do something that I'm really not intending to do with it and I think just keeping those questions at the forefront of your mind is really important If you are starting out and you want to make your first DIY film, think about something that you can do with friends and um, or do yourself. Teach yourself how to um, use a cheap camera. There's an amazing website called Fat Llama where you can rent kit off people cheap um, cheaply. Otherwise, like you, you know, if you've got something like your phone. Um, then think about the ways that you can tell a story through minimal kit. Like, don't think I'm going to do the most like epic shot um, of people fighting, and it's going to be panning in and doing all this stuff because you know that that might that it might not be something that you can afford to do right now. But there are some amazing examples of films which have really lent in to. Um, a more DIY aesthetic and I think a really great source of inspiration for people who are trying to um, start making work on like no budget or shoestring budget and I would say um, looking at Tangerine that is a film that's all shot on an iPhone you know the director is amazing and he obviously had some budget to do that but I think you can really see how a phone doesn't have to be um, a negative you can kind of incorporate it into part of the story another good example of using a phone um, or the phone um, screen as part of a storytelling device is a film called cracked screen by trim lambert which i would recommend people to check out um, and then another film that i watched recently is called host and it was created during lockdown and it's all over zoom all shot over Zoom, cut together. Um, it's not by Bong Joon-ho, it's a different film called The Host, but check it out online. I think it's free to watch. And that's about an hour long film. And that's, I really, really enjoyed that because it's got a good storytelling and a good character arc. And that's shot all over phones and, um, and Zoom calls. <laughs>